Welcome back to CP's Garage, where today we are downloading Forescan for the PC, and I will show you how to use it. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Forescan.org and go to the products page. Once we click on the products page, we will go down to the Forescan for Windows version 2. And we will download it. Once the download is complete, you'll click on it and you'll follow all the normal prompts to download and then you'll open it. Alright, now that we have Forescan downloaded, we'll need to connect our Bluetooth OBD2 connector if you have it. If you don't, you can fast forward this part. So I usually just type in Bluetooth because I hate looking for it in the search bar. Bluetooth. We will add other Bluetooth devices. Click on Bluetooth. Make sure your OBD2 connector, if it's a switchable one, is in the high-speed CAN setting. And just like last time, just a generic pin on these things. And our Bluetooth is ready. So we'll exit out of that. We'll open up Forescan. We key on the car and it automatically will start looking for it. If it does not, we'll go to, you would go to settings, connection, and you see this guy, it's got my buddy's truck's Bluetooth adapter in it, which is not the right one. So we'll go down to OBD2 C1. And we'll go back to this page and click on this guy right here. And you see it's connected. Since I've plugged into this before and I've just completely deleted force hand, we'll just keep going through it. It'll read all the high speed can stuff first, as you can see. You can see they don't recommend this adapter for this vehicle either. But it does all the functions I need it to do, so. Now, if you guys had a if you guys have the if you guys have the switch or the automatic switching one, we can hit yes. We'll switch it over to the medium speed and it'll read the one module on medium speed then yes you want to save it because who knows what you guys are doing if you guys are doing any module changes definitely save it so this is the main page this is kind of a log to show you what you've done and what you've changed this will go in and tell you year, part numbers, calibration level, software level of all the modules. Just like what you would see on a Ford scan tool. This will also show you what modules are on each network. And this just shows you everything that you've worked on. DTCs, this just shows you DTCs that are found in the vehicle. You can read, you can reset, and you can clear log. This is your, this is what you would consider the data logger on the Ford scan tools. This is the little graph guy. We can go to the little gear. We can look at accelerator position. Uh, here it is. Double click on it. It goes over to the selected PIDs. Hit the check button, and it brings up accelerator pedal. But since we're in medium speed can, we have to switch it back to the high speed, which it'll ask you. Switch it, hit OK. Look at that, accelerator pedal comes up. As you press the accelerator pedal, the PID moves. Like it would if you're watching it on a monitor or something. 
So we can stop that. We can change to a different module, say TCM. And then we can look at high voltage, battery voltage. Double click, hit OK. Hit the play button, and it shows us our now that we know voltage. we have our dashboard that shows PIDs. Here's our testing dash test, testing one with the clipboard. We can do key on engine off, key on engine running, on demand self test, running on demand self test. For the PCM TCM OBD two OBD two monitors, which is actually pretty important for you guys. Especially the diesel guys, you can check NCCE for your NOx, NOx PIDs. But this shows all the OBD2 information. It's required for each monitor to run. Again, you got the logs and tests. So these two, right here, the wrench and the configurable programming is the two things that most people want when they use Forescan. This can help you program keys, once you buy the actual one that allows you to use it, you pull the factory key code, which I'm not going to do, so you guys don't see my factory key code. Um, but this is the one that everyone likes, because you can go in and change all the module configuration stuff. See, this is it says right there, sorry, you need an extended license. So, how do you get an extended license? You will go back to forescan.org, you go to facts and questions, and you can get the free one, the free two month trial by going right here. You put all your information in, it gives you everything you need. And you'll submit it, and they'll email you a key. May take up to 30 minutes. So we'll put my information in, my hardware key, which is found right here. Right click or control C. You can control V, and you'll submit. Once you get your extended key, just follow the directions in the email. Once everything is done, it should look something like this, as I showed on the website. I'll include this link for you guys as well in the description. Once it says successful, you'll hit yes, and it'll restart the app. You'll connect. found the adapter not recommending it I'm just gonna start a new session even though there's a bunch of similar sessions in here let it go through as a thing and now we're gonna go back to that module programming thing since that's where we left off all the headlight stuff and all that kind of fun stuff is all in here. So we can go to, let's go to this one first, the gem. Since we're already on medium speed can, we can click on it. See what we can configure. Being that this is a 07, there's not much we can do. Perimeter alarm, heated backlight, which is your grid heater on the back window, or defogger, as most people know it as. Battery saver, we can change how long the battery takes for battery saver to come on. We can add fog lights, add daytime running lights, central unlock via the key. So there's not much. So this is the log view, just like up here. And this is where you go back. Make sure before you do anything, if 
you're done here, make sure you hit the square. Make sure you hit the stop button. Or you can't do anything else. Go to instrument cluster. Hit play again. You need to switch it over to high speed can. We can add belt minder, button chime, language, oil, the oil life monitor, the reverse chime, if you have that. But as you can see, there's not much here for this vehicle. Now for all the fun stuff, you can go into the as built, hit play, make sure you read this. And in this module, there's only one co one line of as built, which is nothing compared to the new vehicles, which have hundreds of lines of as built data. When you're messing with as built data, always, 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 always save the as built data first. Always do it before you mess up. Always do it before you decide to change anything, because at least you have something you can go back to if you did something wrong and it gives you the option to restore it load factory data and so on and so forth on the gear we like our measurements in imperial since we are in the united states mess with that as you please connection bluetooth we can also connect auto wi-fi com or even or even through any j two five three four adapters like vcm2 vcm3 and the vcmm information um when you're using the other one it'll give you the option to do it auto say you have a bluetooth adapter that doesn't have a switch but it does switch between it you can set it on auto and it'll automatically switch this just gives you the information on your licenses so i can actually show you on this one we'll start the car With the car started, we can actually perform this one. This BCM R mode rebalance, which this needs, hasn't had it. It hasn't had it done in about six months, so I'm going to do it now. Just show you guys kind of what it does. It'll tell you what the procedure is most of the time, how long it's going to be, and make sure everything's up to up to temp and everything. So we'll just follow the prompts. Don't know if you can hear it, but it's kicking the engine up a little bit. And it is also balancing the battery. It's also charging the battery because it's low. All right, now that the procedure has been completed, about 20 minutes later, battery is fully charged, cells are balanced. So let's go to another cool feature for scan. So here's our pit area like we talked about earlier. Okay, so we'll go back to the pits and control some. We have the EGR valve selected. We have the demand, the percent open, the RPM and RPM desired. So we'll press play. We'll click on the control button. We see the EGR desired and we can just slide it over. And you can see with a little bit of change, we're changing the RPM. We got the EGR open 90%. And it is really getting the motor going. And if you piss it off enough, it'll kick it off. Just like it does on IDS, that way it doesn't hurt. Well, thank you for hanging in there with me for my quick little rundown of force scan. Um, there's a bunch more you can do on it if you have a newer vehicle. I own a bunch of old stuff, so it's hard to show all the new fancy stuff. There's no sheets for my vehicle, but if you have a newer Ford vehicle, like a 15, F 15 and up F-150, Mustang, Escape, Super Duty, just let me know. I can even do it remotely from my phone or even my laptop. As long as you guys have the Scan and the adapter, we can do it remotely over TeamViewer and get all your foreskin needs done. I've diagnosed a few trucks over foreskin. I have done some of the 
some of the um, sheets sheet work that Aaron talks about on Forescan. If you need any help, just let me know. If you have any of those vehicles and you're near the Lakeland area or within a decent drive, just let me know and I could help you out. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe.